good evening. Good evening. We will be concluding our midweek Advent services this evening, and our theme this evening is Jesus, our King. We will follow the order of evening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Spirit and the Church cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. All who await his appearance pray, Come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation plead, Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our psalmody this evening, <laughs> excuse me, is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, you have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The Son of Man, that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. And crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All flocks and herds. And the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. All that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this evening is recorded in the first book of Samuel, chapter 7. The word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Now then, tell my servant David, This is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning, 
and have done ever since the time I appointed rulers over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body and will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The epistle reading is recorded in Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 1. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Out of reverence for our Lord, I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to the Evangelist John chapter 18. Pilate summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son.
evening, we include a prayer for Carolyn Bruni, a friend of Dorothy. Uh, she will be undergoing surgery tomorrow for cancer. Let us pray. <coughs> Peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church and all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and need, especially for Carolyn and for the family of John Brun Bueller, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and who are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time we will gather our offering to the Lord. We join in our hymn, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. It's number 341. Please be seated. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Your sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, our Advent Savior and King. In our look at Advent bells, we have learned Jesus is our prophet who preaches good news that drives away fear and sadness. We also noted that he has achieved the highest rank possible of priesthood. He belongs to the line of the priesthood of Melchizedek. Amazingly, not only is he the ultimate, the superior high priest, he is also the perfect sacrifice. This evening, we want to look at Jesus now as king. He was descended from kings and is a king himself. Luke informs us, when Pontius Pilate questioned Jesus about a claim of being a king, Jesus replied very simply, yes, it is as you say. John provides a little more information as we heard just a little bit ago. When Pilate asked Jesus what he had done to stir up the anger of the chief priest, he replied, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Sure. We talk about beauty queens and used car kings, queens of the screen and kings of the playing fields. But these are not the same as true royalty. Okay, we have our homecoming kings and queens, but I know of one real, genuine, completely authentic king, not a pretender, not a king forced to give up his throne, but the one and only King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus. You know him too. He reigns from no golden throne and wears no diamond-covered crown. His kingdom is not defined by boundaries, but consists of human hearts. His people are not those united by language or race or ethnic background, but by faith and prayer and the sacraments, by God's very word and Christ's church. This is the one we know as Christ the King. This is the infant who drew those magi over the desert miles from the east seeking the birthplace of history's most important king. This is the rabbi whose teachings and miracles caused Galileans to try to take him by force to name him as their king. This is the one whom God had promised another king, King David. 
would reign on his throne forever. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The angel Gabriel spoke to Mary of this descendant. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. The <laughs> Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Jesus came to rule in the hearts of humankind. He came to be a king far different than earthly monarchs. Indeed, the kingdom of Jesus our king differs dramatically from the kingdoms of this world. Unlike worldly kingdoms, he, his has its origin in heaven, and its purpose is to lead people to heaven. It's not visible and physical, but unseen and spiritual. Its goal is not to enslave people, but to free them. It's not marked by pomp and circumstance, but by meekness and humility. It's not ruled by force, but by love. Its realm is not confined, but embraces the entire universe. Its power is unlimited and extends into the world that is to come. It isn't temporal, it's eternal. Membership isn't by birth, but by spiritual rebirth. And entrance into it comes through repentance and faith. Jesus was born in no palace. His only crown was one of thorns. His only scepter was a reed. His regal garment was a faded cape used in just by his captors. He commanded no military force from a chariot, nor did he sentence renegades to death as he sat upon a judgment seat, as did Pilate and Herod. But he touched the sick with healing hands and forgave the repentant their awful deeds. Jesus was a king unlike any other. He was a king who died to save his people from their sins. He then rose from the dead to rule with love and grace. He hands out forgiveness rather than punishment and welcomes everyone into his eternal kingdom. He is the most genuine king the world will ever know. Our king seeks to strengthen his rule in our lives so that when we do fail, we repent. As we throw off the sin and remember the lesson learned, we can move on with a new will to serve our Lord. Be perfect, commands our king, as your heavenly father is perfect. This is possible only if we allow King Jesus to first erase our sins and then renew us with love's forgiveness. It is only when his holy blood moves in our veins that we are one with him. It is only when King Jesus is not brushed off the throne of our hearts by a palace revolt that ignores him, but when we willingly live as he lives, being faithful to him, despite our seeming faithless ways. It's only then that we find that we are freed, not condemned. We are loved, not loathed. Jesus, our King, brought joy to our world, not by offering glittering gems, 
but by giving us the sparkling gifts of salvation and love. He came to be the king of our hearts so that we can love as he loves and think of others as he does. He came to be the king of our souls so that we can live as he lives forever. He came to be king of our will so that we can will what the Father wills to do and be the truth. Come then and experience this king whose blood was so royal that it was shed for all his subjects to redeem them eternally. And let us not forget, this king will come again, this time in all his glory. As we will sing in our closing hymn, the king shall come when morning dawns and light triumphant breaks, not as of old a little child to bear and fight and die, but crowned with glory like the sun that lights the morning sky. So, hail Christ the King. Your people pray, come quickly, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Christ Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace and love of our God that pass beyond our understanding guard and protect our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We'll continue by singing an original hymn entitled, Sing Welcome to Christ Jesus. and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name may abide to the end, 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And we conclude by singing, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. It is number 348. Thank you.